What's up, guys? We're here from the Pokemon TCG U.S. National Championship, the top 16. Here with Michael Pramwell, and of course, I am Kyle Sukovich. Pram, are you excited going into this top 16? Oh, I'm getting, I'm so excited right now. My hands are a little, a little cold, just waiting for the matches. So, and what better match could we get than Tom Dolzel versus Dylan Bryan? I mean, Tom. He's one of the best performers at Nationals in the history of the game. Dylan, kind of an up-and-coming player, has had a lot of success. Uh, both playing some interesting decks. Well, I mean, could we get a better matchup for this? Uh, this is really like a finals level match in the top 16. So uh, both players are super, super good. Um, I'm really excited to see how this matchup plays out. Uh, Dylan's playing a fairly unknown, unplayed deck. I mean. You see, we heard a little bit of buzz before Nationals about it, but um, it's really proven to be very good uh, in this tournament. Yeah, so Dylan will be using the Miss Magius, Vileplume, Dark Ride deck, sort of like the Kling Clang deck that we've seen pop up uh, in Battle Roads. And then, of course, Tom is using as simple of a deck as you possibly could, which is just four Dark Ride, two Smeargle, try to Night Spear as quickly as possible, and just run over your opponent. But unfortunately for Tom, he's facing Vileplume. It's probably the last thing he wanted to run into. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Tom only runs eight supporters, and with six Pokemon, that's like around 40 trainers or something like that. Yeah. So um, it's 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 really going to come down to whether how fast Dylan gets uh, Bioplume out before Tom can overrun him. Yeah. So Tom, you know, he already has his world's invite. I think Dylan actually does as well. Yeah, I think they both secured it today. Yeah, pretty high up on championship points. So this really is going to be to see who moves on and maybe gets a free trip to Hawaii, which, well, Tom already has. But <laughs> it would be interesting to see what happens there. But Yeah, maybe Tom can steal two trips away. Uh, that's just how good Tom Dozer really is. But Dylan, he's a very great player as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, both players are really just going for the title of national champion. It's very important to them. Um, I know Dylan has been preparing for this tournament all through the week and months before this. So it's going to be a very exciting matchup. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, Tom he usually doesn't play that much. But this year, he played in some bad roads because they made him. <laughs> and you can see what happens when he actually gets to play first. Um, I mean, he just kind of ran through this tournament. Nobody's been able to stop him yet. So hopefully, when we get started here soon, we'll see a really close matchup. And let's go to the game. All right, juniors yep, are ready. let's get in there. Juniors are ready, masters are ready. So, timers are ready. Stage is ready. Computers are ready. Judges are ready. We couldn't be more ready. There's not a lot of you, but I think you can make okay. enough noise in this hall so that everybody knows in the entire hall that the trading card game top 16 is underway. Let's count it down and get it started. We will start in five. You may begin. All right, and we're getting started. Looks like Dylan will start off. He'll go first with. Is that a Verizian? Yes, it is. Woo! Drew would be proud. <laughs> it's a. Uh... I think it's a lot better in Smeargle in Dylan's deck, though, because he definitely wants to not really shuffle his hand, but more just um, just amass a lot of cards for that Vileplume to get out as soon as possible. Right. And we do see Dylan starts off with that Pokemon Collector. This is going to be a perfect start for him. He opens with his best starter, Verizian. He's got a Pokemon Collector. He'll get a couple Oddishes. And if you're Tom, you're probably shaking your head at this point. Yeah, but we do see Tom's grip is full of trainers, so... He is going second, so he's going to have maybe one, if he's really unlucky, or if Dylan's lucky, maybe about one turn to just really unload on trainers. Yeah, if he could get a turn one Night Spear, which, to be fair, it, it's a lot of cards to pull that off, but if he can get a turn one Night Spear, hit the Meridian for 90 and an Oddish for 30, next turn he can catch her an Oddish, knock the other one out. That could be one way to really throw Dylan off, but... Uh, I really think Tom, this is the worst thing he could have seen, but Dylan actually didn't have an energy to double draw, so maybe he's okay. Okay, so let's see here. Tom does have a lot of trainers. Let's see, random receiver uh, coming down for Tom. I did see an Ultra Ball, so we will see either a Smeargle or a Darkrai. Looks like he's going to get an Oak's New Theory with the random receiver. 
uh, and he's got an Ultra Ball that looks like he's going to play as well. Now, Ultra Ball is good in this deck. You want to discard your basic Dark so that Dark Patch can get it back later. And we'll see what he takes with this. It's also really good in this matchup uh, specifically because you can get rid of a lot of the trainers you normally wouldn't want in your deck because of Vileplume later on. Right. So you don't draw them later and you just draw all your energies in Pokemon. Right, and to clarify, that's because Dylan is using Vileplume. It has the Allergy Flower Pokebody, which shuts off all trainer cards for both players. So, Pram mentioned earlier that Tom plays about 40 trainer cards in his deck, so that's two-thirds of your deck that you just cannot play anymore once Vileplume comes out. Yeah, this is definitely a race against time for uh, Tom, you know. Uh, it looks like Tom is having a really good setup, though. Yeah, this is actually incredible. He's got a switch, a sky or a bridge, a dark patch. Oh, he's going to go to that Smeargle. Yeah, and um, so he's going to have a portrait available. We do see a Pont in Dylan's hand. So Tom's going to be able to use many supporters this turn. Uh, generally, Tom, uh, I spoke to Tom earlier, and generally he doesn't like to play down to Smeargle. But this is maybe one matchup where you definitely want to go out as fast as possible, so you want to defend that second Smear goal. Yeah, so we'll see if Tom can actually pull off this turn one Night Smear. Uh, and what he actually can. Look at that. He's got a, a special dark that's a junk arm, a basic dark. He's going to pull off the wow. turn one Night Smear. This is incredible. And if he can get the catcher off the, the portrait or for later on, yeah. wow, this is going to be huge. It's actually an interesting decision whether or not you want to catch her. You know, uh, the Vileplume decks play Twins. So maybe he just wants to hit the Verizian for 90, set up the Oddish for 30, and then next turn, he can... Oh, there's a Seeker in Dylan's hand, though. Hmm, that could be interesting. <laughs> well, luckily for Tom, uh, Dylan does not play catcher. Yeah. So uh, I think the Dark Rider will be safe. But um, that Sage is very dangerous for Tom. You know, that Sage could get him the Vileplume. Right. And with maybe three, four collectors in Dylan's deck, or, I'm sorry, communication, uh, you know, Vileplume could, turn two Vileplume is a very scary reality for Tom. Right, so, uh, Tom did see there was no twins in Dylan's hand, right? Yes. Okay, so, yeah, if he gets a catcher, he's definitely going to want to play it this turn. Uh, take a knockout on that Oddish, soften up the other one. It's got to be what Tom wants to do here. And we do see an Ultra Ball switch. And, uh, I think Tom, I don't think Tom got the catcher. No, it doesn't look like he got it, but he looks like he has an Ultra Ball. He's probably going to try to play that as soon as possible. He just wants to dump trainers out of his hand before they're useless. So he'll probably grab another Dark Rye this turn. Yeah, he just kind of accepting the reality that turn two Vileplume could happen. And right. yeah, here, here we are. Yeah, so Tom, he's played the most consistent deck he could think of. And here doesn't get any more consistent than turn one Night Spear. <laughs> uh, fully powered attack on the first turn. It's actually very incredible to pull off. It takes a lot of cards to do that. But here he's doing it. He's going to hit the Verizian for 90 and an Oddish for 30. I think it's 100 because of the special dark. Oh, it's even 100. Yeah, yeah. you're correct. Um, you know, turn one uh, Night Spear is something most Dark Rock players dream about. And here we are seeing Tom Dozel. Uh, clearly, he's living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see if Dylan can get his Oddishes evolved this turn. That's going to be a huge moment in this game. Can Dylan get a rare candy into a vile plume and prevent his Oddishes from being knocked out? Or is Tom going to get a double knockout and, and prevent Dylan from getting vile plume? We see the vile plume off the sage, so Dylan will have a turn to vile plume. Does he have the rare candy in his hand? Yeah, he oh. had it from the portrait. So oh, great starts from both of these players. Tom's probably not going to be happy with this, but I mean, what can you do? He got the best start possible. Dylan just uh, kind of one-upped him. Well, Tom can still put on a lot of pressure before right. Dylan can get set up. You know, Dylan doesn't have a lot of energy on the board, so he can't really attack for a while. And if Tom can capitalize on this turn one Night Spear, uh, he may be able to squeak a game out. Now, we saw an interesting decision. Dylan decides to rare candy the Vile Plume that has 30 damage on it already. This might give Tom an opening to keep using Night Spear and target down the Vile Plume and maybe knock it out just doing 30 over and over eventually. Now, Dylan does have a secret in his hand, but uh, if you're Tom, you're probably going to be thinking, all right, I want to take this Vile Plume out of play. We're going to target this down, and hopefully my opponent can't stop me, and I'll get to use trainers again. 
Yeah, I, I, Dylan did it just to uh, protect a, a second prize from being taken by Tom in two, in two turns. Right. So it's really interesting on what Tom's going to decide to do. So it looks like he's just going to Night Spear. But yeah, and I think that's definitely the right move from Tom. You need to, well, you need to take prizes as quickly as possible before Dylan sets up. The one thing Tom is going for him is that Dylan has not played a single energy yet. Uh, he, he won't be able to attack for at least two turns. He's going to sacrifice another prize here, maybe. And, oh, looks Ooh. like that is a big card to put down. Uh, yeah, for uh, any of you who don't know, that uh, Pokemon Center, what it does, it heals 20 from the bench. And that shuts down Darkrai pretty hard. Yeah. Um, you know, Darkrai only does, in this case, 100, and 100 damage and effectively 10 right. to the bench. So it's going to take a long time for that Vileplume to be knocked out. Yeah, so every turn, Dylan's going to be able to remove 20 damage from a bench Pokemon. So unless Tom finds his other Sky Arrow Bridge, we know he plays two, uh, that Pokemon Center is going to be there to harass him the entire game, and it's really going to weaken his Dark Ride strategy. Uh, if he can get the, if, actually, if he can get the Sky Arrow uh, within a couple turns, I think he might be in good shape. Yeah, I agree. Um, as long as he doesn't let that Pokemon Center do too much damage, uh, by damage, I mean remove damage. I think he'll be okay still. He's got the Eevee Light on his Darkrai. That's going to prevent a Terrakian from retaliating him for a knockout. And like you said, he's just going to keep putting pressure on. Maybe he'll put on so much pressure that Dylan can't set up in time. But we do see Tom is in a little bit of a predicament. Does he take the knockout and just gets retaliated by uh, Terrakion? Or does he try and set up more, more energies? Right, so it's like Dylan contemplating putting down another Oddish. Um, maybe he plays Blossom, I'm not sure. Uh, or maybe he's just thinking about later where he can Seeker up his Vile Plume if it's got damage on it. Yeah, I don't he, know what that's for. I think he's trying for the Seeker move. Oh, uh, there's ooh. the Sky Hero Bridge. So, Very Tom, nice. everything's going well so far besides the turn two Vile Plume. Yeah, um, so Tom's going to be able to knock out that Vile Plume in three turns. Yep. And that could be huge. That could be like game ending for Dylan, honestly. If if he can shut off trainers, then Tom's deck is just completely superior. The Vile Plume, you rely on shutting off your opponent's trainers because you don't play your own. You don't play these super strong cards like Pokemon Catcher um, or, uh, I mean, anything like that. Junk Arm plus Power, all this stuff is huge. And you shut them all off because you can't play them yourself. But... If you can't get the Vile Plume out, then instantly Tom becomes a huge favorite. It's interesting that Tom put 30 on the Terrakion. Uh, he's clearly saying, if you want to retaliate me, I have a special Darken play in my hand right now. Yeah, I don't mind that play at all. Uh, this is going to force Dylan to have a lot of cards here to avoid his Terrakion being knocked out. And, I mean, what he needs another Terrakion, the, the Miss Magius, to move an energy to a new one. And he also needs a dark ride to retreat that Oddish. Right, so actually he's got the Sky Hero in play. Oh, so yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, but looks like Tom, he has to read the Miss Magus. And I hate to say it, but this has kind of been a downfall of Tom in the past. He doesn't always know what all the cards do because he doesn't always keep up to date. He just kind of shows up to Nationals. And we just saw him have to read that card there. So maybe he doesn't really know what Dylan's deck is. Uh, yeah, I, I think this was kind of Tom's downfall last year, where, you know, sometimes he, he would just see a card and go, hmm, oh, that's really good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never seen that before. Now, we saw an interesting play here from Dylan. He sends up the Kirami X, uses Frozen Wings to discard um, one of the, the special darks from Tom's Dark Ride. That could be a big deal if Tom can't draw an energy, but it looks like he got one. Uh, but discarding that energy, and at the same time, he's setting up the Dark Ride to be locked, knocked out later by a Terrakian. So that was a pretty clever play by Dylan. Uh, but that uh, Kiram is going to take quite a beating here. Yeah. Um, it is. It will get two-shotted, and unless Dylan draws a Dark Ride, uh, I, I think Tom would hit the Vile Plume here. Yeah, I think so. Uh, that's kind of what he has to go after. He does play four special darks, so... He should be able to draw into another one sometime soon. Uh, he'll hit the Kirami X for 90, and I'm actually kind of surprised to see double colors in Dylan's deck. 
you would think that all of his energy would be stuff that he could move with uh, Miss Maggie's, you know, psychic rainbow prism, but he's thrown in some double colorless as well, so maybe that caught Tom off guard. Um, definitely. Uh, I wonder what the, uh, double colorless uh, attackers Dylan runs other than Kiram. Yeah, maybe maybe he runs Mewtwo, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that's strange. Not, not a whole lot benefits from a double colorless, but I guess we'll find out. And let's see. So Tom did target down the Bioplume this time. Puts uh, puts that up to 70 damage. Got to be getting a little scary for Dylan, who's going to have to bench his Dark Ride this turn. And there it is. Uh, this will give his Kirami X free retreat because of the Dark Cloak ability, and he'll be able to retreat, but I don't think he'll actually be able to really do anything this turn. He'll probably just promote a Pokemon to sacrifice and pass. Uh, I don't know what else he'll do. Yeah, he can't really... I, that's why he's getting the extra Oddish, I, I think. Um, he, he might just bench Darkrai, set up an Oddish. Yeah. This could actually turn into a really scary spot for Dylan. Um, if he's going to have to sacrifice this Oddish, then Tom will be able to Night Spear, put another 30 on that Vileplume, and all of a sudden, his Vileplume's in range of being knocked out, and, well, if he doesn't get another one immediately, Tom gets access to trainers again. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's super scary for Dylan. <laughs> Though he may have a rare candy vile plume, so who knows? Yeah. So uh, if Tom, I don't know if Tom actually plays N. I don't think he does. So does no, he? no, he does not. Yeah. So there won't be any disruption coming from Tom. His deck is just pure. I'm getting to the point. I'm attacking you as quickly as possible. In this game, it was turn one. Uh, but maybe that will be a big deal for Tom because these vile plume decks can get clunky later on in the game. Yeah, with all this early pressure, uh, Vileplume generally likes to sit back for a couple turns, so that turn one Night Spear is so dangerous. Yeah. Uh, now we see something really interesting from Dylan. He's actually put a Rainbow Energy on his Terrakion. That will actually put him in range for a Night Spear knockout. Why do you think he did that? Um, I'm actually not sure. <laughs> uh, I would have kind of liked to see it on Miss Magus. Yeah. Or the, yeah, Miss Magus actually. Um. And, and then he's, he's move also it off. promoted his Dark Ride to take a hit. What do you think about that? Uh, he's gonna need. I think he has another energy in his hand, so he's just gonna attach the Dark Ride and then move an energy. I think he's planning for a Land Crush. Yeah, uh, he's so. definitely gonna go for the Land Crush this turn. But it almost looks like he's setting himself up for failure. Uh, I don't know how else to put this. He has to attach the active to retreat and then move an energy to his Terrakion, and then he can Land Crush and get a knockout. But Tom's got another Dark Rye waiting. Yeah, and it has, a hun it has a special Dark on it. Uh, and the whole Dylan's whole deck is revolved about keeping your energies in play. Right. Uh, so when that, if he attacks with Terrakion as is, he's going to lose three energy, and that's a huge blow. Yeah, he's not going to have any way to use Retaliate next turn, which also means he won't be able to get a knockout on Tom's Dark Rye, and Bioplume's going to be gone too. This could be a devastating turn, but we see another interesting play from Dylan. <laughs> okay, so he sends up the dark. He sends up the vile plume. He kind of concedes that all right, this vile plume has has uh, fulfilled its purpose, <laughs> and now it's time to go. Yeah. So uh, that definitely means that Dylan has another rare candy and a vile plume in his hand. There's no other way to look at it. And I mean, if you're Tom. You kind of just have to take the prize. I mean, what else can you do? You can't play catcher. You can't really just retreat and pass. That's going to give your opponent way too much time to get energy in play, to draw things like Seeker, and eventually overtake your board. So he's got to attack, but what does he hit for 30 this turn? Um, I think he actually goes after one of the EXs. They both have 90 on it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so a couple Night Spears, and that'll be two extra prizes for Tom. Uh, Dylan's going to need to... Probably Seeker both of them at some point. Right. But I... But, uh... Let's see what he does. Oh, he goes out to the Terrakion. Hmm. Interesting. Not sure why he did that. There's already in range for... Um... I mean, another Night Spear knockout. Maybe he's just afraid of the Pokemon Center once again. I don't know why else he would do that. It seems a little better to target down a different Pokemon, since you're going to knock out the Terrakion regardless. But, uh... Tom decided to target down the Terrakion. Uh, I think that's a, a safe move. Um, he's basically, he knows his opponent has Twins X, it's the Twins right now. Right. So he's, he doesn't know how many Pokemon Centers Dylan runs. He may be one, maybe two, maybe three. Who knows? Yeah. 
So he's just saying, okay, I'm going to play this as safe as possible. I n know what you can do, and yeah, I'll just play around it. Actually, this is a pretty clever play by Tom. He saw this coming. Dylan puts down another Terrakian, uh, moves the energy to it with Magic Trans, and then Seekers up his other one. So this is actually devastating for Tom. All of a sudden, it looks like he's in a horrendous spot to win this game. Mm -hmm. And oh, this is this is real. This is like just Tom. He yeah, he got a super great start, and now he's watching the game slip away from him. Right, and there's another vile plume. Uh, everything's going right for Dylan in this situation, and I think we're just going to see three turns, three land crushes. Well, this was a retaliate, and six prizes taken for Dylan. This game's going to swing all the way back around in Dylan's favor, and there's nothing Tom can really do about it. Well, if Tom can draw a couple more energies, uh, he may be able to pull it out. Uh, if Dylan keeps the Terrakion active, and he, oh, remember, this is Miss Mage, it's not Clink Clank or Meganium, so he can't move energies around like those other decks can. So he's not going to be able to just drop the other Terrakion and go Land Crush. It's going to be a much slower process. Right. Uh, he does have that Prism on the Kirami X, so he'll be able to move that to the active and Land Crush this turn. So. Uh, basically, it comes down to, does Dylan have a Terrakian and two energy in his hand? Uh, he can bench another Terrakian with an energy, and then when Tom knocks out the active one, uh, the, the next Terrakian will come up and just retaliate for the win. So uh, it's going to come down to, does he have two energy? We know he has the Terrakian because he secreted it up. Uh, it's going to be close. All right, so we do see a Night Spear. Uh, yeah, and he goes after the EX. He's definitely planning to take three prizes in one turn. Right. Uh, so that puts that up to 120 right now, I believe. Yes. So he still needs two more attacks. I don't know if he'll be able to pull it off. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I think I just saw Dylan grab a Seeger, so I think that's pretty much uh, the game for Tom. I think so, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're just going to watch this game play out. Uh, he's just going to Seeker up that Kirim, and uh, Tom will probably call it quits after that. Right now. I'm sure Tom knows exactly what's going on. He knows, all right, I've lost this game. But he also knows we're playing in a 60-minute best two out of three match. So even if I lose this game, I want it to take as long as possible because my deck is much faster. If I win a long, drawn-out game two and time gets called, we go to a game three sudden death, and then I have an extreme advantage. So that's why Tom is uh, just going ahead and taking his time here, but uh, actually he gets an N from Dylan. This could be huge. <laughs> oh wow, this is, oh, if Dylan needs to hit an energy off these two cards. Right. Um, <laughs> if he doesn't, he loses. Yeah, that's really all there is to it. He needs to hit a Seeker or an energy off of these two cards. Uh, Tom, I guess we didn't factor Portrait into the equation. Dylan was the one who had the N in his hand. So all of a sudden, this game got scary, scary close for Dylan. And I think he drew a collect a communication and a gloom. <laughs> so Tom could win this game in the next turn. Tom could steal this game from Dylan. This would be an incredible win for Tom if he could pull this one off. Oh, the nerd chills I'm getting, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just see why Tom is one of the best players in the world right here. Uh, finding a way out when it looked like he was pretty much done for, and... Oh, he I doesn't have energy. I think... That's a Mewtwo. I think that's it. Has Tom actually won? Yeah, that... Oh! Oh. Dylan discards the dark, but Tom has one in his hand. Tom Dolezal won game one in the most... <laughs> wow. Unlikely fashion, I almost want to say. I cannot believe that. Wow. I thought he was dead for sure. I thought this game was all but wrapped up for Dylan, and then Tom, he says, No, no, I'm still going to win. <laughs> It's okay. You you have the end for me. Yeah. I don't need to play it. <laughs> like, I, I don't play it because, you know, you guys play them. So <laughs> that's why I'm better than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom will take game one. And that is really, really bad for Dylan, who's playing the slow Vileplume deck. Uh, the, the worst part about these Vileplume decks is that it's only 60 minutes. Your deck is slow. It takes a long time to set up. If you get to a game three, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage. So... What do you think Dylan's best chance is to win this series? I'm not really sure. I think about the huge mental blow to Dylan. Like, he got yeah. basically the best start he could ask for. He got everything other than, like, a turn one energy. 
on his and by his second turn he was had an energy drop he had to turn to vile plume he even got to go first yeah and tom was just like no this game is mine <laughs> so um you know what's what would be dylan's game plan here he basically just played out the matchup exactly how he wanted to and it didn't work out yeah i mean let's be honest dylan played that as perfectly as he could he did not make a single mistake that entire game he played extremely well um his tech set up it did everything he wanted and he still lost <laughs> that's scary <laughs> <laughs> uh, so i mean that has to be running through your mind like man what do i have to do to actually beat this guy this is crazy I think this matchup actually may hinge on whether Tom gets turn one Night Sphere or not. Man. Yeah. And then remember, even if Dylan wins this game, there's still a game three because Tom won game one. Yeah. And this is the slow Vileplume deck versus the <laughs> fastest deck in the format. Yeah. The turn one Night Sphere deck, apparently. <laughs> so here we are in game two. We're going to set up. Uh, Dylan will be able to choose who goes first. And if he is sane, he will choose to go first. Uh... And once again, he'll be able to go first. He did have that collector start last game. We'll see yeah. if he gets it again. Oh, he has a uh, double dark rise start. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see here. Um, dark rise is pretty popular here at Nationals. It's even in the Vile Bloom decks nowadays. Yeah, it's a great alternative to Dodrio. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah, poor Dodrio. He was around for cities, but then after that, it was all downhill. You're like, I'll, you play uh, Bell Sprout? It's okay. I'll play Dodrio. <laughs> and now it's you play Bell Sprout. Okay, I'll just bench my Dark Cry. <laughs> retreat. <laughs> Sorry. A much easier option. The Smear will come down. Hmm. Okay. So uh, we'll see. Dylan didn't miss uh, energy the last game. That was the only thing bad about his setup. He missed energy for the first two turns. That's actually a really big deal for his deck. He needs to get energy in play so he can start moving it around. Get some attackers. It's important to get the Vile Plume, but. You need the Vile Plume and the energy to start attacking. I think Portrait's actually a very dangerous move, a very risky move by uh, against Tom. Yeah, you right. know, his only supporters are Pont and Juniper. <laughs> yeah. And I think Juniper is the one card Dylan never wants to see. Uh, he really needs every card in his deck. Like, if he's just holding two, like a Rare Candy and a Vile Plume, that's just like, oh, it could just be disastrous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I guess he didn't really have a choice here. He didn't have any supporter in his hand. And I wonder if he has one in his hand now. It doesn't look like he actually does. So this could be devastating for Dylan. Oh, uh, uh, and now it's a second energy. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Right, good. But I had to run over and yeah. shout at him. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Yeah, just like I did at my battle road. I had to come out of the commentary booth and call the judge like four different times because people were playing two supporters in a turn oh wow <laughs> but thankfully these guys know what's up and i don't think tom's gonna pull off another turn one night spear well he did start with dark Rai last game yeah his hand's a little worse this time he doesn't have the ultra ball or dark patch stuff like that he's just going straight into oak's new theory he does get the Eviolite, which is big like we mentioned last game but if he gets a turn one night spear here i'm just gonna be shaking my head you know i don't think he needs a turn one night spear uh especially since dylan didn't get a turn one oddish right. so he's allowed that a little extra breathing room but he does get an ultra ball so let's see if he has to switch <laughs> <laughs> here we go again tom um uh, he's got a sky hero bridge too he's got ultra ball dark dark patch, patch. oh my wow tom he is he's the man he is the man <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Uh, the only thing, though, I don't think Dylan has a supporter this time. Uh, so the only thing that's going to stop Tom from pulling this off is Dylan not having a supporter. But if he does, it's certainly possible once again. Are we going to see two turn one Night Spears in a row? I think we just solved the format. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's pretty good. I don't know how you beat that. Uh, <laughs> well, if, if there's anyone who can do it, Dylan sure can. Yeah, that's for sure. The only way to beat a turn one Night Spear is probably a, a turn to retaliate from Terrakian. That seems kind of unlikely coming from the Mist Magus deck that has no energy on the yeah, field. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to happen this game. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how, what his plan is to deal with this. And Dylan, I mean, you got to be looking at Tom saying, no, no, don't do that to me. Again. That's not fair. <laughs> You're already good. You can't do this to me twice. <laughs> well, when you're good and a little lucky... <laughs> Man, do the results follow. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so let's see. And look at that. No supporter. So that is 
good and bad for Tom. He sees no supporter, but at the same time, he doesn't get his turn one night spear. Right. Uh, I think if Tom can just start discarding his own... Actually, if Tom is holding Juniper and Dylan Portraits... I think he is, actually. <laughs> oh, man. I, that might be game. Because uh, Dylan just loses every attacker in his deck. Right, he's going to put down the Terrakian. Okay. And he's going to communication as well. So he realizes there could be a Juniper in there. I cannot risk that at all. So he will have to discard like three different attackers, though, which is a really big deal. Um, can't tell. It looks like it is a Juniper from yes, Tom. Yes, it is. It's a Juniper and Sky Arrow. So it's going to be mixed feelings from Dylan, who will get a new hand. But at the same time, he will lose a bunch of Pokemon. And it's very smart that he did prepare for that possibility. Yeah. So, very good play. Quality play is very, very high here. And I wouldn't expect anything less from the top 16 here at Nationals, especially from two perennial Worlds competitors. I mean, these guys have been at Worlds the past couple years, always been doing well. Mm -hmm. And we do see a second Oddish, so he's definitely saying, all right, I'm preparing for that catcher. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, which you have to do. You have to put down two Oddishes. Otherwise, like you said, Catcher just comes down and your Oddish gets knocked out and you're like, oh, I can't get Bioplume out. And you just end up losing. Did you see a supporter in Dylan's hand? Um, I didn't catch it, but we'll see. Looks like, uh, now if you're Tom here, you're certainly going to want a Catcher, I think, this turn. But yes. who would you target with the Catcher? Um, maybe the Darkrai. You, you already saw a Darkrai go away in, from the Juniper. Right. So if you Night Spear the Darkrai, and then you shut off Free Retreat from Dylan's deck, his deck comes to a grinding halt. That's very true. Uh, I think it's between the Darkrai and the Terrakian. You can target down where the energy is and take out a Terrakian at the same time. So uh, either one of those is a very good choice. But I don't think Tom has a catcher. It doesn't he, look like he does. He has a junk farm, though. Um, a couple randoms. Has he used the catcher yet? I I don't believe so. No, I don't. Th I don't think so. Um, let's see what Portrait gives him. Oh, and that's not good for Tom to see. There's a Twins, and actually, that's not as bad. Um, I mean, Dylan does have the communication to get the Bioflume, I guess, but maybe he'll still decide to go ahead and Night Spear. I think just. I think Tom passes here. Uh, it's definitely a viable option. Yeah. You wait for a catcher, maybe. You don't want to walk into Twins. That's just scary to see. You really don't like to give your opponent more time to set up, but in this situation, yeah, you're probably right. You don't want to just give your opponent a free vial boom. Yeah, definitely. Because um, Tom's game plan here, I think, is really just snipe off that Darkrai. Uh, or the Terrakion, whichever, both of them are good targets. Right, and even more so if you're Tom. You're in no hurry to finish this game. You've won the first game. If your opponent takes all game to set up, you're fine with that. Uh, even if your opponent has the advantage because of it if it takes him 20 minutes to set up you're like oh okay no, i just win game three that's cool yeah uh, yeah definitely <laughs> so, so tom did pass yeah very and, smart yeah tom very smart player and dylan playing extremely well i'm really glad we got to get this match <laughs> oh yeah this is this is quite a treat uh we do see a random i wonder what well he only gets two choices on what he gets yeah. but <laughs> which one will it be um he, this can happen when you play eight supporters. He's going to have to reveal half his deck. Now, if you're Tom, do you play the junk arm just to waste it? To just get rid of trainers out of your right hand? Um, well, he's got a Juniper, so it doesn't really matter. But, yeah, um, yeah I, I probably would. Yeah, it's interesting that Dylan held the communication. He, It's it's really smart that he didn't go for Gloom. That way, uh, Tom can just catch with the Gloom. Or You can actually set up really weird things when you put a Gloom into play. Like, Tom could Night Spear put 30 on the Oddish and catch with the Gloom and get two prizes still. So, communication for Gloom doesn't really get you anywhere. So, I like that Dylan held on to it. And he's just going to wait for the Twins so he can get the Rare Candy and then another Twins probably. And then communication for the Vile Bloom. That's funny, the Tom Plus Power is here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, there's a Juniper. And, uh... He looks catcher oh, on Terrakion. Very nice. Oh, I wonder if he can one-shot that Terrakion. <laughs> uh, I think he, he's already played a plus power and a junk arm, right? Yeah, and the, I think there's a special dark on that dark Darkrai. Wow, that would be a huge play from Tom. Eliminating two energy, two prism energy from play and a Terrakion. Here's a second plus power. Wow, so Tom does play that four plus power in his deck. Um... You know, this is like a win-win for Tom. He gets rid of a bunch of trainers, 
and knocks out the Terrakian. And here, down it came. Like, wow. And once again, if you're Dylan, you're probably shaking your head saying, man, how do you do this stuff? That's not even fair. <laughs> who is this guy who just pops out with a dark ride? My Terrakian has 130 <laughs> hit points. You only do 90 damage, and you just knock me out in one hit. What's up with that, man? I don't think I've ever had a, a Terrakian one-shotted by dark ride. No, Tom did tell us earlier that he knocked out a Terrakian with an Eevee light on it in one hit, so... That's ridiculous. <laughs> so, Tom is capable of anything with, with just Darkrai, apparently. And I think Tom's only supporter, again, is Juniper. So, uh, <laughs> you know, Dylan's going to... You get out of Bioplume here, right? And... Uh, looks like he's going for a Mischievous, but he probably has the, yeah, the Bioplume yeah, He has already. the twins, right? Uh, he's going to get the Bioplume out. And I wonder if he, like, Juniper's here. He may lose a lot more. Like, he has two Miss Mages in it, Or he has one Miss Mages in his hand, I believe. So Juniper loses that, and then his deck is like just in the discard. Yeah, um, I mean, Juniper is terrible in these huge setup decks for that reason, and that's why Smeargle is a huge risk for these decks. Uh, you, you don't want to play Cleffa because, well, Darkrai exists. Night Spirit, it's a free prize. And uh, actually, I just want to mention Dylan, he grabbed a Mischievous first from his communication, and then he put it down, and then he's like, uh, whoa, 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 let me look at my hand real quick. And then he went back. And he grabbed a vile plume, so he almost just made a huge mistake. He almost didn't get his vile plume into play this turn. He also has a Pokemon Center here, so that's going to be huge for Dylan. Right. Um, definitely protecting that vile plume really early, actually. Mm -hmm. And here comes the Juniper. Oh, and he actually didn't play the Pokemon Center, so that is in the discard pile. Oh, this is. It seems like almost everything is going right for Tom <laughs> within like within like reason, like. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that could be better is Dylan just not having twins. Yeah, uh, and it looks like Dylan's going to actually X-Ball with Mewtwo here. That's only going to do 60 damage thanks to the Eevee Light and the Resistance, I believe. Yes. Well, uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, that should be 20 less. Yeah, that should be 20 less. I guess I'll go over and tell them. Or someone go, t here, go tell them. All right, so we are going to try to get that fixed for you guys. Uh, that would actually be a huge difference in the game 20 damage makes all the difference in the world yeah, definitely um it has an extra 20 so we will get that corrected uh one of the perks of video recording games huh yeah yeah and it looks like they might be realizing what's going on but uh our very own drew holton's gonna be over there on the job to sort things out uh it has uh, maybe the Dark Guy actually has four energy. That's what it looks Is like. Is that? Oh, it? Oh, yeah, you're right. All right, so we freaked out over nothing. Sorry. <laughs> why? Uh, wonder. Why oh, is, may why? maybe it's two special darks. That's how we got it. Oh, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. All right, so not sure why we overlooked that, but that's, hey, that actually makes this much scarier for Tom. Uh, all of a sudden... His Dark Guy could be knocked out next turn by an X-Ball if Dylan just attaches another energy. And... I would like to see Tom just retreat this turn because he won't have a Dark Ride to attack next turn. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that, but it looks like he's just going to go ahead and Knights here. Yeah, and um, it just all comes down to whether Dylan has energy for this. Uh, you know, Tom still has... You know, either way, Tom has... Uh, I'd actually like Tom's move here. and Because either way, he's going to lose a turn powering up that Dark Ride. Right. So if, if Dylan takes the prize here... He actually goes ahead and right, is right. no longer has access to twins. Yep, I agree. And if Tom like portraits into an N, Dylan may have nothing left. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, maybe maybe that's what he did it for. That's actually extremely intelligent to know. Okay, he's gonna knock me out. I'm cool with that. That means he's gonna get two prizes. He'll be winning. He can't play his twins anymore. Twins is really the foundation of all these Vileplume decks, and if they can't play it anymore. Maybe his deck's just going to start to sputter. Uh, we still don't even see a Mischievous on the field. So, yeah, I, I actually do like this play from Tom now that, you, now that you mentioned it. Yeah, and there's no, like, Prism energy. or Here's a, here's a Rainbow energy. Um, so that, <laughs> that Mewtwo is just even closer just to being knocked out. Um, and oh. a Terrakion comes down, so not even a, mis a Mischievous. Uh, I don't actually mind that from Dylan. Uh, he has the Seeker in his hand, so... Uh, he knows Tom can't attack this turn. There's no way. He can't play trainers. He 
can't play the dark patch to get an extra energy. So he knows he's going to have a turn to just go, okay, Seeker, I'll pick up one of my bench Pokemon, then put down the Mischievous. I can still, um, I can still retreat the Mewtwo with the double call, or for free with the dark, right? I'll still have my energy. Tom's in actually a very scary uh, situation. If Dylan's only supporter is Seeker... Yeah, I just thought of that too. Yeah, that Dark Ride just comes up and I think Tom loses at that point. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll lose the two energy on the Dark Ride. Ugh, that would be extremely scary for Tom. Uh, I don't I don't know if Dylan has any other supporters. I did see the Seeker. And I, I, I think Tom does not portrait unless he draws another basic. Yeah, um... Maybe he'll do it anyway. Uh, maybe he's not thinking about Seeker. I mean, that's really an unusual card to think about because, well, one, Seeker's not played that often, and you really don't expect to see Seeker from a portrait. You're thinking maybe he's got twins, maybe he's got Sage's Training or a Collector, but... Oh, and here it... Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> and... Tom just lost everything. That is absolutely devastating. I think, like you said, that might actually cost him the game. Yeah. Wow, uh, very nice play by Dylan to uh, know that, all right, my only supporter is going to be Seeker. I'm not going to Twins for any supporter. I'm just going to Twins for Energy and Pokemon. And I'm going to make it look like, hey, I don't really have much. Yeah. Um, you know, to be fair, if you're Tom, you see your opponent has a nine-card hand, you're expecting him to have a supporter and not just a Seeker. But uh, that's just horrendous to see. Um... I mean, if you're Tom, you got to be kicking yourself. But at the same time, you can't really be too upset because, I mean, hey, I took a chance. I wanted to get another Dark Ryan play, and all he had was a Seeker. What an unusual circumstance. So I think what Tom does here is fairly good. He does have two more Dark Rides, so what he's going to do, he's just going to buy time. He's like, okay, you tricked me. <laughs> but... Dylan actually did top deck a collector there as well. Oh, uh, that's unfortunate for Tom. Um, you know... But, so Tom's just like, okay, you got me with your little trick here. I'm just going to buy some time, rebuild the Dark Rye, and hey, if I lose this game, not a big deal. Yeah. I mean, he won the first game. It's the best two out of three. It's not a big deal. Um, now, like you said, Tom could probably drag this out quite a bit. Unless Dylan starts attacking with Terrakian, then, well, I don't know what Tom does about that. He doesn't have any Eevee Lights. Yeah. Play plus powers to knock it out in one hit. I think if uh, Dylan drops down Miss Magus and another uh, uh, energy Prism any, Energy, any yeah, type, yeah, Prism Energy, then uh, Tom is in. I think he's just pretty dead. And again, we did pass Tom dead game one, so yeah, that's who true. knows what miracles uh, Portrait can do. Yeah, um, and he's going to set up uh, Smeargle once again. And I, I would not use Portrait if I were Tom. <laughs> actually, I would, because you can hit, pick up the uh, the damaged Darkrai. He actually just attached an energy to the damaged Darkrai. Oh, that's so. right. Yeah, you're right. It looks like he used Portrait anyway. That's going to open a bench spot for Dylan. Uh, weird, because he knew Dylan top decked the Collector, because he just played it right away. He didn't have it last turn, so he used the Seeker anyway. Um, strange. Hmm. Yeah, uh, there's the Mr. Magus. Uh... I think Dylan's just kind of like, will you scoop? <laughs> and Tom's just like, hmm. <laughs> um, so we do see a double Mewtwo, a double DCE Mewtwo. Uh, you know, we haven't really seen that in quite a while in terms yeah. of major tournament play. Yeah, I like what Dylan's doing here. He's just saying, all right, X-Ball, knock out the Smeargle. I'm going to save my Terrakian for your big boys. And um, it really just looks like a matter of time. I said this last game, but this one... I am 100% sure it's just a matter of time. I don't think Tom can win this game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't think there's any way either. Um, you know, even if Tom retreats and just goes, I'm going to block with this fresh dark cry, you know, tracking just comes up. All Dylan needs is another rainbow or prism. He just needs any energy. He's got yeah. two fighting on it already. I guess it'd just be ideal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, yep, he just passes and... Yep. It's there actually there's a rescue. Ooh, interesting. And actually, there's a seeker, and that's game that's over. Game. Yeah. yeah. So, this is probably best situation for Dylan. That was actually a fairly quick game. Uh, I mean, in terms of a Vileplume deck, they should have plenty of time to finish this series. I think it's just going to come down to how many prizes Tom goes up before time is called. Um, also, remember, Tom is going first. 
Right. So if Dylan actually just gets a lone basic, yeah, or he's like going to be sweating, that's for sure. Yeah. Or even if it's just like basic and Pichu, <laughs> that's like the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Tom, you know, he's shown us a turn one dark ride, and he's get, even getting to go first this game. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just going to come down to how fast Dark Ride comes down and how much pressure it puts on early. Yeah, I agree. But if you're Tom, you're really hoping that game went longer. Um, the Seeker was just devastating for Tom multiple times. Uh, the first one was forcing him to pick up his Dark Ride. The second one actually just ended the game, forced him to pick up his Dark Ride, and then Dylan knocked out his only Pokemon. So uh, Seeker, I think that's going to be on Tom's mind this game. But, again, he's going first. He could get a turn one Night Spear. Time's probably on his side. Um, let's just hope for Tom that Dylan doesn't get a turn two Vile Bloom. Yeah, those two games actually did go fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, there might actually be enough time for Dylan to play a full game. Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, I mean, the first game didn't take too long. And that's just kind of what happens with EXs, especially one like Darkrai, who he's... I mean, he's kind of like a glass cannon. He does a ton of damage, does 90 and 32 bench Pokemon, but Terrakian knocks him out in one hit, gives up two prizes when he gets knocked out. So it's like, all right, I'm all in. Uh, I'm just going to Night Spear as much as I can. I'm just going to try to beat you to the punch with your Terrakians, and maybe I'll win the exchange. All right, so let's just see how good Tom's hand is. Yeah. Um, and we see a Lone Oddish. No, just Lone Oddish. Whoa. <laughs> oh, this this could be a very, uh, I guess, anticlimactic game three. Yeah. Uh, we do see a mulligan. Um, okay, so that could turn into another basic for Dylan. And, and it and, turns into another Oddish. Oh, and so, if you're Dylan, you're just like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but with only, I think, six basics in Tom Sack, uh, it's actually expected for him to mulligan yeah. at least like once or twice. He actually didn't mulligan either of the first two games, did he? No, he yeah. did not. That's pretty crazy. Only six basics, I mean... You're going to mulligan quite a bit, but, I mean, he didn't the first two games. He did here. Um, if he didn't, Dylan would have been stuck with one basic. So uh, pretty fortunate for Dylan, i got to say. Uh, even even though Dylan drew a second basic, turn one Dark Rye is right. still like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh -huh. If you're Dylan you see turn one Dark Rye, you just go, oh, no. <laughs> um, and especially that since it's an Oddish and the other Oddish takes 30, yeah. What do you do? do you, you can't even drop it. Like, if he only plays three Oddish, Oddish yeah. it's like you play a third Oddish down, it's like, uh, I don't have Bioplume all games. Yeah. Unfortunately for Tom, it doesn't look like his hand is very good. He does get the Eevee Light. That's a, a good thing. But there's no Dark Energy. That's the big thing. Not a single Dark Energy to use with all of his trainers. Luckily, he does have a random receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, that would have been quite bad for Tom if he didn't. Um... And he gets actually gets the cherry pick as a supporter this time because he can junk arm for it too. Uh, yeah. He does have an ultra ball, so oh, he even picks up probably the most ideal one too, the most ideal supporter, yeah. Juniper in this situation. Yeah, um, he has an ultra ball. The bad thing about ultra ball is you can't really junk arm for it because you have to discard two for junk arm and then discard two for ultra ball. So we won't be seeing anything like that. Uh, it would be nice if Tom could get a bunch of basics out, but I don't think that's possible. Well, let's see. He's. I think he's just going to Ultra Ball and then uh, yeah. get a Smeargle and then play the plus power down. Why not? And then Juniper, yeah. yeah. No sense in trying to go for an Oak's New Theory, especially if you were to get another Juniper. <laughs> that would be bad. Yeah, you definitely want all those Junipers. You even want your opponents to use Juniper, which is weird enough. Right, right. Um, you know, Dylan did have to use Portrait last game. That actually, we thought it might have devastated him, but it actually ended up not mattering. But... Yeah, I mean, Juniper, a lot of the time it's, oh, I don't want to discard all these cards. But against Vileplume, it's, oh, sure, I'll discard all these cards. I can't play these later. <laughs> yeah, uh, and especially with Tom's, like, 36, 40 yeah, trainer deck, <laughs> yeah. you're just like, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so we do see another turn one Smeargle. Um, yep. He's had the same story in all three games. Uh, just a, a little... <laughs> testament to how consistent Tom's deck is. No, no, no. He grabbed the other Smeargle this time. It's a different art. He plays one of each. So it's a little different of a start. He tricked me. <laughs> uh, so here we go. This is the moment of truth for Dylan. Do we see anything crazy? Uh, there's a dark ride. He's definitely like, I'm not getting secret again. <laughs> yeah, not doing, not doing that again. 
Uh, but he gets another Dark Ride down with an Eviolite. This is something he did not get in the first two games, which is a huge deal. That means Terrakian won't knock him out in one hit, and this is exactly what he needed. And he does have, let's see, a plus power. He might want to just use it now. Uh, or actually, no, he could actually. He's going first, so he could wait a turn. Um, seeker. <laughs> and there's the Seeker. Oh, wow. Oh. That actually, that's huge. Um, this is going to scare Dylan so much next turn. Um, he's going to have to bench Oddish, of course, but he's got that Shaman EX in his hand. And he knows, uh oh, Tom can portrait my Seeker. If I don't bench a second Pokemon, I can just get Seekered and lose the game. So he's going to be forced to put down that Shaman EX unless he top decks another Pokemon, which means that's an easy target for Tom to catch her and get two prizes. And Dylan's hand actually seemed weak because that was his only supporter. Yeah. Uh, uh, he doesn't. Too. He doesn't have much gas. He does draw a Verzi in here, okay. but he can't double draw yet. Yeah. Um, now, if you're Tom, uh, you're probably saying, oh, man, <laughs> I wish he didn't draw that. But Verzian's not the greatest thing in the world. It actually opens up weird possibilities with Catcher. Um, to hit the Verzian for 90 and then Oddish for 30. And then, well, Dylan does have the Gloom in his hand, which makes things interesting. But um, the I Dylan don't know. I'm sorry. What's did that? Dylan have a Twins in his hand? Yes, he okay. sure did. So, interesting that Dylan put the rainbow on that Verzian right now. Yeah. Is, do you think it's a bait? Um, I think it's all he had in his hand, but uh, I don't mind that play at all. It's definitely, if I play it, sure, now I get to double draw, I get an energy to play. Uh, if you catch her and knock me out, I get to use Twins. So it's kind of a win-win situation. Right. Um, though, if... Well, if... Tom uh, picks Seeker here, which he, I think he will. Yeah. Uh, what, if you're Dylan, what Pokemon do you pick up? Uh, you have to pick up the Verizian. There's there's no question about it. He, if you pick up an Oddish, your Oddish gets knocked out, and you probably just lose the game. Yeah, and then what happens is the only Oddish that can evolve has 30 damage on it and is in the active spot. Yeah, um, so a really good spot for Tom still. Uh, Seeker, man, who knew this would decide the series? <laughs> Tom's like, I don't need to play these cards. You're playing it for me. Yeah. <laughs> so there is the Seeker once again. Dylan correctly picks up the Verizian. Man. <laughs> uh, actually, I thought of something weird. What if Tom gets another Smeargle and a Switch? He gets Portrait the Seeker once again, and he could have won the game that turn. Think about that. Ooh. That's scary. Yeah. Uh, Dylan qu quickly realizes that possibility. Like, That's not happening. No, no, no. <laughs> Go dark, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he he holds the rainbow energy back this time. He's like, he kind of realizes, okay, once my Oddish is knocked out, my Vileplume's going to be active. Yeah. Or actually, with the Vrizian down, Vileplume probably still be active. Right. So, attach, dark to, attach the rainbow to Vileplume, retreat. Mm-hmm. So, very nice that he's holding it back this time. Um, this is actually a really strange, like, chess match almost, where Tom knows, all right, he's got twins. I don't want to take a prize if I don't have to. Um, so, he's got a catcher in his hand. He's got to try to manipulate damage to not knock things out. In a perfect world, he knocks out both Oddishes at once. Uh, the problem is Dylan has the gloom in his hand, so he'll be able to evolve one of the Oddishes, and he goes for that dark Darkrai. I like that thing. Very smart. He's going to put 30 on the Oddish. And then next turn, he's just going to catch the other the non-damage Oddish. And then he's just going to be in a huge lead. And he does get the Junk Arm, so he will do it as long as Dylan doesn't draw a Vile Bloom. Yeah, I don't think Tom has a way to retreat this turn, though. That's the bad part. Um, there's no Sky Arrow Bridge. He hasn't drawn it yet. He, I don't think he has a Switch. Maybe he has a Junk Arm for one. Nope. Oh, those are all gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Actually, is that the fourth one in his hand? I can't... Yeah, it is. Yeah, he's gone through all his junk arms. So in terms of, like, his deck size, he's doing pretty well. He and actually decided not to Seeker that turn. I wonder why. Um, his opponent would just pick up Verizium. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but at least... Yeah, I don't know. Like <laughs> Maybe he screws up and picks up Oddish. Who knows? <laughs> uh, who knows? Uh, so there, at least uh, Tom made some headway. Uh, there is a damage counter on that Dark Rye. Uh, really kind of a wasted turn for Tom. And the clock is ticking. I mean, the longer he gives Dylan to set up in this situation, the worse he's going to be off. But he is going to be the aggressor here, so that's not actually a bad thing. Right. Uh, he will be up on prizes early. So the longer it takes for anyone to take a prize, 
I think that actually more advantageous it is for Tom. Yeah, it, it actually all depends on how much time is left. Yes. Um, so I think if the game plays out fully, I think this is kind of worse for Tom if he gives more time to Dylan to set up. But say if time gets called after Tom takes his first prize, uh, I think he just wins. Yeah, uh, definitely. And we do see the Sky Arrow. I would actually hold that back for now. Yeah, I would as well. You definitely want to counter the Pokemon Centers. That, you know, that shuts down Dark Ride pretty hard. Yeah. And, and so, like, oh, a double Dark Patch? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, Not bad. <laughs> so Tom is two, almost two, full, uh, three fully powered. He'll have three up this game for sure. And still not taking a prize yet. He's going to hit the Dark Ride. Put thirty on Oddish and just say, "Hey, you have a twins. That's cool." I think I kind of one up you here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tom's gonna get three dark rides. He really wants to find his third Eevee light. I think that would put him in a tremendous position. Uh, just being able to and wow, he hit that dark ride for a ton of damage, didn't he? Yeah, he plus powered quite a lot. Yeah, uh, and here, Dylan, he held on to the gloom just for this. Mm -hmm. uh, he's gonna be able to evolve it, and oh, this is actually weird. He's going to double draw, but unless he gets a Vile Plume, Tom's just going to hit the Gloom for 30, I think. He's not going to knock out the Verzian, and he could still set up that play where he gets the double knockout on the Gloom and the Oddish. Yeah, um, I don't think he drew a Vile Plume either. He drew, no. like, another Rare Candy. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, I think it just all comes down to Dylan's draw. He may even opt for, like, another catcher just to get rid of him. Yeah, well, looks like Tom's going to Juniper here. Um, and he is burning through his deck. I wonder uh, if Tom's going to duck. <laughs> I hope not. That would be really, really bad for Tom. <laughs> it's but, a fourth Dark Ryan play, I think. Don't see that every day. <laughs> well, he's just like, um, just <laughs> he's burning through his deck so much. Uh, he has th effectively three Dark Rides powered up. Uh, he has a ton of energy in his hand. And he has a catcher. Um, oh, he's going for the prize this turn. Hmm. I don't know if I like that play that much. Um, he did know Dylan had twins in his hand. So uh, he's going to go after the Gloom, I guess. He's thinking he can just kind of Night Spirit to death. Um, I'm not too sure, though. That was weird. Yeah, there is Pokemon Center. Um, he's going to have access to that. And he discarded that Sky Arrow. Right. So um, maybe he's just fearing that, hey, you don't actually have energy in play, really. It's going to take a while. Uh, there's been a good amount of time that's passed in this game already. Uh, yeah, I but if you're going to catch with that Oddish, why not just knock out the Verizian? You take out the energy, you still hit the Gloom for 30. Um, why would you catch with the Oddish there? I'm not sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so we do see Mewtwo come out um, with a DCE. He's going to X-Ball. Looks like 80 once again. It's time at 4 energy. Oh, nope, this yeah. time. <laughs> this time we got it right, folks. It's only 60. And that takes you... I mean, that doesn't scare Tom at all. Um, now it's going to take a, what? He can't even X-Ball for a knockout next turn, I don't think. No, no, no. Uh, well, no. another 60. Plus 40? Eight, no, no. no nope, that nope. only put him at 160, so yeah. uh, I don't think that's going to happen. If you're Tom here, what do you put the 30 on? I'm thinking the Foul Plume. Uh, yeah. Just kind of put more pressure on it. Um, so he's definitely going to do Look a lot that. of damage to the... Top. Tom... He realizes he can use his Pokemon Center as well. Oh. He retreats the Dark Rai, removes 20 from it, and he's saying, that attack's not going to matter. <laughs> I got three Dark Rise, buddy. I got free retreat. I'm just going to, you know, shuffle him around. That X-Ball was just kind of a wasted turn. And he has, he committed a Mewtwo up there. Uh, that's, you know, he has to even attach another energy to retreat that Mewtwo, and he doesn't well, even have a... It's only two to retreat. He's got the double colorless. Yeah, but you want to keep that DC if possible. Right. Um... He, I, I think this is a scary board for Dylan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Three Dark Rise, two with Eevee Lights. Even when you're playing Terrakian and Vileplume, that's just that's scary. Uh, hit, getting hit for 90 and 30, and you just gave him a healing ca card. I mean, he gets to heal 20 from his Dark Rise, so I'm sure Dylan's plan was like, alright, I'm just going to X-Ball you, and then uh, I'll Terrakian retaliate later, and you'll be in range now. But now Tom's like, uh, no, no. I'm just going to heal it off. <laughs> um, wow, and that, you know, he'll just take another 60 this turn? Like, No, no, no. You wouldn't even want to do that. You, wouldn't, you don't want to give so. Tom two more prizes. That would be uh, bad. Uh, what do you send up here? 
I think. Dark Ride? You might just retreat to Verizian. Give him a, another prize? Double draw. Uh, oh, oh, he's just gonna axe ball. Oh, this is. Ooh. Huh. Um. There's that not, Pokemon Center. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure on this. Uh, you know, Tom can start powering up a fourth Dark Ride. <laughs> so he's gonna be able to cycle these Dark Rides pretty effectively. Four Dark Rides <laughs> in one game. <laughs> My mind is blown. And he's going to be able to knock out that Mewtwo, take two more prizes, put the Bioplume at eight, and... Oh, I don't like that play from Tom. Um, I think he should have retreated to the Dark Rider without the Eevee Light. Um, you want to save that if possible. Uh, I don't know if he's attacking or not yet, but... He may be just counting damage, and Dylan just kind of jumped the gun. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he might... But he, he, I don't think he'd be t even attached yet, so... Okay, so... Yeah, I just... Like I said, I think if you're Tom, you save the active Dark Ride for sure. You're going to be able to heal off that 60 eventually with the Pokemon Center. Um, but uh, never mind. Yep. Like... Puts on. Huh. Well, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Uh, but I don't know what Dylan actually has in his hand. Maybe he doesn't have the Miss Magus. He needs that and the Terrakion this turn to retaliate. Uh, never mind, he's got it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, Tom's going to have a f fully healed uh, Darkrai back up yeah. with the Eviolite, so Land Crush will not do the job. Yeah, yeah, you can see how important Eviolite really is. I mean, that's why I wanted Tom to save that one, but it uh, looks like he either didn't care or he didn't think he would have enough time to fully heal it. So uh, he just left that active. And there we go, Pokemon Center coming back to bite Dylan. And, uh, uh -oh. Dylan could miss me. Uh, Mischievous Tom out of the game. That's true. Mischievous has dual draw, forces both players to draw three cards. Are we going to see Tom deck out here? I don't think Tom knows what it does. I don't think Tom knows what it does either. <laughs> um, and wow. Could we? I mean, we've seen everything in this series. We've seen a turn one Night Spear. We've seen a Seeker to decide the game. And Tom is using Pont to draw more cards. Uh, well, I think it's actually to shuffle back in. Um, I don't know how many he had in his hand. I don't think he'll be drawing any this turn, though. Well, I mean, you do, you lose the pawn. Right. Uh, so even if he forced a double draw, a dual draw, you can't shuffle that three back in because you have one less pawn. And he's at, like, four? Still three cards. Uh, oh, four cards now. Uh, so Tom has bought himself one turn. Um, and Tom is just like, okay, I'm going to do Night Spear, hit your Vile Plume, and he's just trying to take six prizes. I think he thinks he's safe, but... He's in a very dangerous situation. Uh, realistically, Tom's only hope here is time gets called right now. <laughs> um, and I don't think that's happening. So, Does Dylan have a mis mischievous? I, I don't know if he has it in his hand. He's probably... It's definitely what's going through his head. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't think Tom knows what's going on. Or maybe he did, because he, he used the Oak's new theory. He put himself at four cards in his deck, so maybe Tom is aware. But either way, if you're Dylan, you're saying... Oh, I can't believe this is happening. He's only got three cards in his deck. I'm going to deck him out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, see, he's actually going for the Verizian to double draw. Just to try to get the Mischievous, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this could be a bad finish for Tom. Uh-oh. <laughs> Pokemon TCG and Cup players, we're just that is Tom. Kind of, kind of, kind of wait in awe, and time was just called. Uh-oh. So That's actually... Like one turn too late for Tom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tom will be able to knock out this Verizian, I think, and then put 30 on Vileplume. But, you know. If... You know what? I think if you're Tom, you retreat and you, you portrait. I think that's actually your best option here. Oh, that's very true. What... Maybe, maybe if Dylan has an N, it's, it's risky, but I don't. Uh, if Dylan just has that, uh, the mischievous. He oh. wins the game. Uh-huh. Yeah, he takes two prizes, goes the one. Here we go. And, and I think Dylan knows what's up. He's Tom's got to be thinking, I got this game. And, uh, I mean, why wouldn't you think that? The, the game is, like, over. You're at one prize to four. There's a Vile Plume with 90 damage on it. If you Seekers it up, you just get the catcher for the win. Uh, does Dylan have the Mischievous to dual draw this and is, deck Tom out? This is all it comes down to. Oh, man. He drew an N. That's I mean, not the card he wants to play. Judging by his body language, he does not have it immediately. 
He cannot um, play that end down either. No, him. no, no. Oh. If, he, if he plays that, Tom, he gets more cards in his deck. The double, the the, yes. the dual draw doesn't work. Um, yeah. Wait. Um, <laughs> and it's so smart that Tom didn't kill the Vile Plume. If he did, he could have communication for it. Yeah, so yeah. maybe he is actually aware of what Mistrevious does. What an insane game we're watching here in the top 68 nationals. Now, I was going to say, what if Dylan just seekers up his uh, Miss Magus and goes for it? But if he did that, he wouldn't be able to use the magic trans. Oh, he picked up Vapu. Does he have a communication? I don't know. We'll see. Communication would be the game winner. And I don't think he does. Now, um, I think Tom was actually turned zero, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So that means, uh, uh-oh, there's the mischievous. Uh-oh. I think that's it. Yeah, that's that's game over. Whoa! He passes. Does Darkrai need to be on the bench for that thing to work? No, you can just retreat Darkrai. Uh, are there two or three cards left in Tom's deck? I can't tell. Uh, <laughs> I, think that, I think it's two. Okay, um... I feel like it's two. But Tom, if he plays a catcher, he wins the game. He's having junk arms, though. Yeah. Uh, are, there, are there four catchers in his discard pile? I'm not sure. Oh, no. Is that really going to happen? Four or five. I think that's all of them. <laughs> I cannot believe this game. Um, wow. What more could you ask for out of a game like this? Well, what he can do, um, he can play portrait. Yeah. Next, what he's gonna have to do. There is an N in Dylan's hand. Yes. Um, and that will disable double draw completely. Oh, gonna... oh no! Oh no! He needs he needs to switch here. No! 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 <laughs> All he needs to do is live. What, there's no need to be this aggressive, uh, Tom. And uh, wait, 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 wait. Tom, he's turned two, right? Yes. Dylan's turned three. Yes. Yeah, so this is the last turn of the game. It actually does not go to Tom's turn. He will not deck out and lose. Really? Yeah. Oh my! Tom did it. Because you have. You have to start the turn. The game doesn't end until you start the turn and draw your card. Tom did it. Does Tom realize? Um, we'll see. This is um, this is really interesting. This is actually going to come down to a technicality, maybe. Ooh. How many times have you said, oh, I would have won the game next turn, yeah. but time got called. Um, and he was ahead on prizes, so he won. This is the same situation. It's no different. Mm -hmm. uh, even though you say, well, Tom didn't have any cards in his deck. I win. I, like, actually win when he starts his turn, but... No, it doesn't get there. Yeah, it doesn't it, matter. It's almost like, I, I think I remember a situation where, uh, where our very, our good friend Ben Potter, uh, yeah, he was last year he was using Skunk Tank and he would have won on Poison Damage. Uh huh. Same thing. But time was called on turn three, mm -hmm. and Poison Damage never happened. Yeah, that, that's that's just how the rules work, and I hope, for the sake of the integrity of this tournament, that they they rule correctly and uh, Tom should advance. That's just. That's just how it should be. Uh, I know some people might not agree with that. You think, no, Tom lost this game by all means, but no, no, no. The rules are the rules. Tom should be moving on. Yes. And we are just awaiting a ruling. And this is, I mean, this is very intense. Somebody's going to be extremely unhappy with this result, and you can't blame them. Yeah, I mean, both players are with, are somewhat in the right. Yeah. And that's where it's really hard to call this. Uh, I'm, I'm, Real, my hands are cold with anticipation. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so, <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, it's all going to come down to this. Um, I'm not sure on who they're ruling in favor of. Uh, I think Dylan looks pretty sad about this. So I think they ruled in Tom's favor. Uh, yes, Tom will well, win. Tom Dozel will advance to the top eight. Wow. And they got the ruling right. If you're Dylan, you have to just... I mean, I would almost cry if I were in that situation. Yeah, I would be pretty uh, heartbroken. Yeah. Um, you know, deep. I think he, he kind of realized what, what just happened. And uh, he kind of... That's why he's not putting too much of a fight. Because he kind of... Yeah. He, he kind of just realized, oh, they are actually right. Yeah, so um, that's going to wrap this match up for the top 16. Yeah. Uh, Tom will advance. We'll be back with the top eight match here from U.S. Nationals. I'm Puka. I'm Michael Pramwat. And we're here from the top cut, and we'll be back with the top eight. See you then.